by Afi, and she's going to share with us the open source for good, open street maps. And we all know that open street maps helps a lot when it comes to the you finding the road or when some emergency happens and people use open street map when earthquake or something that uh, emergency. And today, let's welcome Afi to share with Open Source for Good. Let's give her a big hand. Just a second, uh, wait a second, our, our voice uh, microphone seems happen, something happened. Wait a minute. Our speaker on um, microphone, something happened. Wait a second, sorry. Okay. Although we can we can directly play the sound, but we can uh, use the oh, use we we broadcast through the microphone. Okay. Can you? Can you speak a sentence for us? Okay. 哎，对，你去动它。呃，不要，不要跳，不要跳，你就去动那个一百趴那个东西，我看看。Oh, uh, okay, we are coming back. So, Afi, sorry for keeping you wait. You can, you can progress 
you can start your speech now. Thank you. Okay, thank you so much. Um, so as I was saying before, my name is Abigail Afid Badago and I'm a software engineer, I'm on the back end, and I'm from Ghana and I'm happy to be here today. I'll be talking about open source for good and in particular, we'll be looking at the Open Cities Accra project, which happened with OpenStreetMaps Ghana. Um, so I'll start with a presentation where I'll share my slides. We'll go through um, the experience, how to contribute, um, the data collection. Um, we'll also look at how to make your first mapping um, resources that you could use and relevant links. And then we'll have a Q&A session at the end. So let's start it now. Um, if you can hear me, just let me know. I'll start sharing my screen. Mm, please just give me one second. Okay, great. Oh, sorry. Yeah. Um, I guess my screen is visible now, right? So as I said, today we'll be talking about the open source for good, in particular the Open Cities Accra project. So I'll be talking about OpenStreetMaps, the OCA project, um, how we got contributors, challenges we had, data collection, relevant links, why we even decided to do this in the first place. So um, I'll just turn off my video here for one second and I'll go through if that's fine with you. So open source for good helps our lives and systems in so many ways. As the presenter um, said when she introduced me, she talked about how it helps in times of disaster such as um, floods or like when bad things occur and also to help us see our roads clearly, right? So OpenStreetMaps, as we all know, is a free editable map of the whole world, which is currently being maintained by volunteers all over the world. And we know that geographical data is not free, but OSM gives us access to use this. And that's one cool thing about it. It helps us save our communities from collecting GIS data to creating meaningful insights so that we can make uh, decisions when it's critical. So the reason why we came up with the Open Cities Accra project, right, was because for years we've had problems with flooding, especially when it rains. I'm not sure about Taiwan, but in Ghana we have um, two seasons, mostly the dry season and the wet season. So the wet season is more from um, May to June. Yeah, it's more from May to June where there's like intense or heavy recording of it, like downfall, like when it comes to rainfall. So we realized that like there was real current flooding, which was becoming more of an imminent problem. So Mobile Web Ghana and OpenStreet Web Ghana and humanitarian OpenStreet team came together to gather data on local bu buildings, drainage systems and infrastructure so that authorities could use that data to make certain neighborhoods that were more like vulnerable, more strong. So in April, 2019, five people were killed by floods. In 2015, between 100 and 200 people were killed either by floods or fires, whilst flooding confounded rescue efforts. Because these people that were in those flood areas, it was very, very hard to find them. Like imagine a, a situation where there's something happening, right? But you don't have enough data to navigate the places because there wasn't a clear cut road or map of that place. So we realized that there was a need to collect data on those areas, right? Check out the buildings, make sure everything that's seen on the map is being is what's being represented on the ground. So as I said, they teamed up with um, the ministry and certain organizational bodies, right? And they provided them with vital data so that we could help like manage the situation and improve the lives of people in those communities. So this focus on certain neighborhoods in Ghana, probably ones you've not heard before. <laughs> and yes, and those um, communities lie along a certain 
river, right, basin. So it makes them very prone to, like, prone to the flood. So to help the government help um, tackle this flooding and waste challenges, so the Open Cities Accra project um, to help employ remote mapping, field data collection and validation. And this was supposed to build the capacity of the local governments to collect and interpret spatial data and contribute to the Open Streets platform. So I'm probably um, thinking you'll be asking how we did it, right? Because right now you know how, why we did it. So first we had to find the goal of the data collection. So why are we collecting this, this data? Like, why are we going to um, map? Um, how do we build the data models, time boxing? So these were certain points that we took into consideration. What are the existing data sources? Like what tools or devices are we going to use? How we find people to map? like people who contribute to that, how we provide incentives for them, how we find a workspace to gather everyone, just as everyone like listening to this has gathered, right? To like listen to this particular presentation, how we get a workspace for that, how we train them, how we do the remote mapping, how we collect um, data on the field and how we get outcomes from it. So these are things that we took into consideration to make sure that this project that we embarked on, right? like met its targets and goals. So in, in short, right, how we did it was we looked for people in like diverse communities, especially the communities which were affected by these problems because the people in those communities know like every single route, right, or route in those communities. So it makes them more attached to it. The community members were also involved since they're familiar with the environment. And this helped them like get up to speed with the project. So with data collection, data is very essential. And we know this because we use data for almost everything. It helps to make more informed decisions. So the first and second le level of data collection, the data was collected and made open to everyone via open data. So you could check that out. The data was collected with Kobo Collect and ODK Collect. All these are open source platforms so that data is free and accessible. Then we also got drone imagery, right, to capture the current footprint of the areas that we're going to map. And we use Mapillary to also validate the street level imagery. Um, with Mapillary, we use cameras such as the GeoPro. I'm sure you've probably heard of or probably seen one where they mount certain cameras on like, on like cars to move around a city. I think Google had um, Google has a car like that, like where you mount a camera on top of a car to sort of survey the areas that you are going through so that it takes like the current footprint or the route in which like your community is located. Then the third and fourth level of data collection, the teams were dispatched to visit the areas that we had already collected or data was collected to make sure that we had the right data this took about um, roughly two to three weeks because the first part was the training, the second part was mostly the field mapping and then the latter part was um, validating the data because we have to make sure that everything that was captured, everything that was inputted was valid. So certain challenges that we had. So initially there was some reluctance to participate because it was like a two to, like as I said, two weeks full to like four weeks period of data collection, which came with a stipend. So um, the stipend helped sort of motivate people to like come more or join more or be more consistent. And that really, really helped us. Another method was to also provide snacks and meals to make sure that um, the participants were engaged. We are not tired because I mean, walking and doing field data collection, it gets a bit tiring sometimes, especially when the sun is up. So these are my references that we'll probably be looking at soon. Um, so I, I don't know, you could I could place this in the chat for anyone who needs it, if you need to reference something, in case you ever want to come up with um, a mapping project or a mapping exercise and you want something to refer to, these are um, references you could look at. Um, also, to start mapping, this last link here is very essential because it teaches you how to map the various tools and 
yes, how to make your first contribution, which we'll be looking at soon. Um, at this point, does anyone have any question? Then I'll just move to the demo of the first mapping. Okay, so as I said, so this is the Open Cities Accra Project Ghana. It's online. You could go to humanitarian open street maps and like search for it. The data is there, so you could read about it, or you could also go to the other links to help create your own project. Um, the the next link is also another one for resources, just to see the final report if you need more data on what I just presented. So I'll go back to the, the demo, right? So this is the last link I talked about, right? That sort of goes to OSM, right? You could use the, the ID editor. You could use something called GeoOSM, right? That's more of detailed editing of the OpenStreetMap and it's mostly offline. So in certain areas that don't have um, constant access to internet, you could use the GeoSM to sort of um, be a substitute for um, the ID editor if you don't want to do a live edit. So um, you could go through and use certain tools, right? In a, in a few seconds, I'll show you how the interface looks like. Probably you are already used to the interface, so that's that's good. So this is how the OpenStreetMaps interface looks like. Um, currently, this is Ghana. I think because of my location, um, yes, yeah, so yeah, this is Ghana, and these are areas that like some have been mapped, some have not been mapped. Um, also, oh yeah, I forgot another thing. If you want to participate in a mapping, or let's say that there could be a crisis, let's say the Haiti crisis, right, and you want to map, there's always an open board on open streets maps where you could see um places that need volunteers to map. So there's always an opening for that. You could just go to open street maps and then check the, the board. You see the, the, the designated section for um, projects that are highly critical that need like mappers immediately. So if you want to get involved, that's one way of getting involved. So now I think I'll move on to the GOSM. So let's say you want to choose a particular place to edit, right? So you could just zoom in. Um, so you see, once you zoom in and you get a more clearer view, you the edit button is immediately like turned on. So you could like select a particular part that you want to edit that will sort of make your like everything simpler. And you realize that as I go through, as I touch like different points, you see that there's, sorry, uh -huh. yeah, you see on my left pane, right? There is um like feature details on what um, I'm currently touching. Currently this is like somewhere in Ghana called Circle. <laughs> it's like one of, I think our biggest interchanges, right? And it gives you information about what the road is, the surface, the lanes, um, allowed access, and all those things, whether there's a junction or not. So these these um these features have data that people sat down to add to enable movement easy to give more information on a particular place. If you also realize certain places are marked as like schools, right? So you could mark places as schools, hospitals. Um, places of work, you like it's just you adding data to your vicinity. So, um, I hope that after this, when you go back wherever you are, I'm sure probably it's been mapped or some places haven't been mapped, you could try and add data to the area in which you are. So, we could go ahead and then try out the live like editing. If you have, if you could see right now, you see that there are three options up here. So there's a point, right? This point is to add, as it says, restaurant, monument, postal boxes, or other points to the map. 
So if there's a particular point in a map that you want to add information to, like let's say here, right? You could see that there's a cross sign there, mostly denoting churches. Some also denote volleyball courts. This one is also a general store. This one is a basketball court. These are information that you could add. Then the line is to add highways, streets, pedestrian paths, canals, and other lines to the map. So if there's a pathway that has been recently added to your area, you could come and then go to open stream maps, right? And then add it. And you have to use a line feature for that. Also for the area, you could use it to add parks, buildings, and like lakes or whatever to the map. So um, let me see. So here, this is an area because this is a parking lot. This is um, a hostel. So all these are areas. Um, with open stream maps, one thing that I also didn't like add was you could use the in browse editor to edit, or you could use the JOSM port large Mercator. JOSM is quite common, like that's what I have tried before. We try that in a few seconds, and it helps you sort of edit um offline. So you could select an area in which you want to like map. Let's say today is Saturday and I want to just map a certain area because I have maybe an hour of free time. You could just select an area and map. So moving on, this is how the GOSM looks like after um, downloading like a certain area, specific area to map. We could do one, I'm coming, one second. So you could choose a line here right and then use it to mark um let me see a certain building so it's quite easy initially it may seem stressful because sometimes if you can't control your cursor it sort of makes a mess but you just have to put your cursor where um the building or structure you want to map is and then create certain points like this Normally, you have to zoom in more to have a clearer view. And when you're done, you just press the enter button, right? And that creates sort of um, an area in which you've mapped, right? Or let's say a building that you've mapped or you've added a certain road or lane to give more information. Also, you realize that on the first part, the clicking on the features gives certain um, information. Right, so here you could have Prudential Bank, and then the name is the multilingual name is English Prudential Bank. Then you could have like different like details about it. So as I was saying, I hope I'm not be rambling on too much, and you've been able to get one or two things from this presentation about Open Street Maps, the Open Cities a crowd project, and probably how to get started with mapping. Um, at this point, let me just pause the presentation for a while. Um, is there a question? Hello, hello, okay. Thank you for Effie's sharing. And, and I got some question from audience. Uh, OK. When, so I think there's a little link that um, I don't know. Is this something I should share, or the question just comes direct? Pardon? How are we, how are we going to do it? Yeah, so I was wondering if I should share the Slido link or the questions will come directly to me. Uh, um, I think we can just um, stay here. <laughs> okay, okay, yeah. no problem. Great. Okay, and uh, you can you can turn turn off the the screen share, then yes, we can okay. see you more Good. clearly. Thank you. Thank you. Yeah, I, I got a question from the, that when when you mentioned about the 
diversity community collaboration. And does it, uh, did you have any challenges from the diverse community collaboration? And do you have any advice to give us that when we also have a diverse community to collaboration, what is the best practice or yeah, any advice that you could share with us? So, um, with regards to um, diversity collaboration, I'd say that for this particular project, right? Okay, I don't know about um, Taiwan, but for Africa, most women are more um, laid back. Um, we are not really into tech things. So with this project, we put in extra effort to get more females on board so that there'll be, be a bit of gender balance, right? And for diversity, we made sure that we had people from different backgrounds being represented, different tribes. I'm sure there are different tribes too, like in Taiwan. We wanted diversity, like we wanted people from different places being represented. So in order to do that, we made sure that the, the participants that we got, we tried to sort of include everyone. We just didn't pick from one particular side. We made sure that everybody had a representation. And also from the community level, we made sure that like each one of them had like their sort of representative. So we didn't have sort of a gender imbalance. We tried as much as possible to increase the participation of women. And also we try to create in diversity with um, people from different backgrounds, like different tribes too. So it was very inclusive. I hope that answers the question. If there's a follow-up question, I'd like to answer that. Okay, thank you. And we still have time for one more question. And anyone want to submit your question now? Okay. Um, I think, I don't know if I, okay, so I didn't, I don't think I left my details. <laughs> One second. So let me just like screen share for a second again, because it looks like I didn't even say thank you. <laughs> so, um, <laughs> after the Q and A session, the last slide is, thank you so much for, um, listening to me, um, going through all this. You can send me an email if you need any resource in case you want to have your own project. Um, there's my LinkedIn and thank you so much. Thank you for having me. Thank you, it's our honor to have you to share with us. Thank you so much. Thank you. Bye-bye. Bye. -bye. Bye.